In this video, I'll be testing the brand new Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetric 6 against its predecessor, the Asymmetric 5, and the all-season Goodyear Vector 4 season generation 3. The Goodyear Asymmetric range has always been a fan favorite, getting excellent reviews online, and I think the Asymmetric 5 was top three in over 18 tests across four years, so an outstanding tire all round. With the Asymmetric 6, Goodyear are promising more of everything, more grip, better handling, lower rolling resistance, lower noises. It, like all new Goodyear tyres, is EV ready. That means it's suitable for electric vehicles. So to find out exactly how much this moves things forward, I've got a Tesla Model 3 Performance and I'll be doing all the usual testing, dry, wet, rolling resistance, comfort and noise. Just to quickly interrupt myself, I will be coming back to the south of France in three weeks to do the test you've all been asking for and that's the Asymmetric 6 versus the Pilot Sport 5 versus the Bridgestone Potenza Sport and all of its rivals. So if you're not already subscribed for that, hit the bell icon so you get the notification and you'll be the first to see how this stacks up against its rivals. But before I jump into the car, let's speak to one of the new tyres designers to find out the design philosophy and targets they had for this new tyre before finding out exactly what they translate to on the road. With our new Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetric 6, we're building on our very good product Eagle F1 Asymmetric 5, which was one of the best tyres performing in UHP segment. The major improvements we made are to make the tyre ready for anything, first translating in lower rolling resistance than an Asymmetric 5 and much lower noise emission than its predecessor. The thread compound technology we use make it very efficient on dry and wet braking, allowing with the high resins loading to brake very short and also the adaptive contact pad technology makes the potential on dry handling and wet handling much better than its predecessor. Wet handling, and I'm apologizing right now for two things. Firstly, apologies for the lack of good footage. The Miraval weather hasn't been kind to us. It's the south of France, it should be sunny, and it's really not. We've had the test hampered by rain. Uh, I definitely uh, underestimated the range issues with the battery. Not saying anything bad about Tesla. It's just a fact of batteries and how long they take to recharge, even with a quick charger. And I only had two days uh, at the end of a very long testing spree in Europe before I go back home to the US to fit this test in. So we've had to cram everything into a day. So apologies for that. And also apologies if this really isn't my best work speaking, because my God, this Tesla Model 3 performance is outstandingly fast and it's playful and fun and this is in four-wheel drive 50 50 mode like what a machine anyway the tires headline statistic and i'll put the braking data on screen now is that the asymmetric six is seven percent better than the asymmetric five in wet braking which is huge and this is both data i've got in the tesla and goodyear's own data on a bmw 5 series so i'm going to be using both sets of data throughout this so we've got two data points the braking is very noticeable on track. The other thing Goodyear claimed they work hard on is to make the tire feel more sporty. And you can tell, even in the wet, it turns a little bit sharper. The Tesla feels a little bit more agile and a little bit more fun. And it's just a little bit playful. The Asymmetric 5 was one of the better UHP tires in that size anyway. And the 6 has just built on that in a lovely, wonderful way in the wet. The negative of the six, and there is some negative, there is a little bit more aquaplaning. They've definitely taken away some of, I don't know if it's tread depth or whether it's some of the land sea ratio, the void ratio of the tire. And that does give you a little bit more height to play. It's not much, but it's just enough to mean the, the extra grip you get in the corners is offset by the aquaplaning. So the lap times for me were almost identical. And I think on the BMW, they were slightly quicker on the six, the new tire, which is good, but not a huge amount, not the 7% you'd expect from braking. And that's just because there is a little bit of aquaplaning, but that is all paid back in sportiness. So I think for me, I'm not a big uh, proponent of aquaplaning being super important or aquaplaning resistance being super important. So for me, that's an acceptable trade-off. And obviously it was for Goodyear and a lot of the tire manufacturers are moving in that direction. Now, the all-season tire, I'm gonna be completely honest here, I didn't want the all-season tire in test because we're not doing any snow testing, which is where the all-season tire will excel and absolutely destroy the five or the six. And I was really worried that in the dry and wet, uh, all I would have to talk about it is sort of negative because 
we know to get a tire to work well in snow, you need sipes, and sipes mean you get more block movement, more tread movement, and it definitely affects braking, but I thought it would affect handling a lot. The Goodyear Vector 4 Season Generation 3 was the absolute star of wet handling for me. It was a little bit slower, but the way it drove, I didn't expect it, and it has changed my opinion on all season tires. I don't know if it's a, the larger tire size is a factor. In fact, I'm sure the larger tire size is a factor. And Tesla have done a very, very good job with probably the quickest steering rack in any production road car and a uh, very, very flat cornering. Considering this thing's pretty heavy and pretty powerful, so I'm hitting these corners pretty quickly, it stays flat. So I was expecting the steering to feel a bit mushy and a bit sad. It was great. It wasn't as great as the, the asymmetrics. I'm not saying that for a second. The asymmetric five was more sporty and the asymmetric six was more sporty again. But it was lovely in isolation on this Model 3 performance on wet handling, you probably wouldn't be able to tell unless you were used to the braking of a sports tire because the braking is better on a UHP tire. Laterally, it felt wonderful. And not only that, there was absolutely zero issues with that complaining, well, which we did have on the five and the six. And when it started sliding and you could just play, it was progressive and fun and warm. And honestly, if I could pick any tire to just hammer around wet handling with, it would be the all season. And I never ever expected to say that. Yes, the braking data, it is a little bit worse, but wow, what a performance from the Vector four season generation three. Also, what a performance from the Asymmetric 5, because I already like that tyre, and the 6, because they've made the 5 better, which is wonderful. But this is in the wet. The tyres don't spend their whole life in the wet, and dry is very important, especially for a performance tyre. So let's go see, oh my gosh, this thing is fast. Let's go see how the tyres stack up in the dry. I don't know how Tesla have made this handle so well considering it's weight and power but it's equally as impressive in the drive but i can't go too fast because apparently the window opens up slightly and uh we get some wind noise so maybe i'll just pull the door shut a little bit anyway i'm starting this chatting to you with 315 kilometers because i know some of you will be interested and i'll tell you what it is at the end in the dry dry braking i'll put the data on screen there is a small improvement with the asymmetric six. The asymmetric five was excellent anyway. Uh, the Goodyear Vector four seasons. This is at the point in the video I need to remind you on snow, the difference between the Vector four season generation three and either of the asymmetrics would be hundreds of percent in braking and traction. So don't think too bad of it uh, in dry braking, but that is the area all, all of the all season tires struggle the most with. Still very impressive around the handling lap. Like in the wet, it just felt smooth and buttery and controllable and didn't squirm around as much, especially on the front axle, as I thought it was going to. I'm gonna to have to slow down again. Uh, but it was at a disadvantage to the other two tires. As for the other two tires, well, as in the wet, the asymmetric six had a very small advantage. Smaller in terms of outright grip, but in sportiness, you could really lean on the tire more and feel it working as the Goodyear designers intended it to. So you had, I would say the, the very, very initial peak steering response probably felt broadly similar. Again, we're talking fractured. It was hard for me to differentiate, but as the tire started to turn, as the slip angle started to be obtained, it then turned quicker. So like that very, very first tiny movement of the steering wheel, there was probably, the six was slightly ahead, but then as you started turning in like here, the six became quite significantly ahead, which is wonderful because I always want from this sector of tire, I want a tire to feel sporty if it's called an ultra high performance tire. And a lot of tire manufacturers for rolling resistance improvements, for comfort improvements, for noise improvements, they're making their tires softer and lighter on sidewall without addressing that, without rebalancing that in terms of handling. And Goodyear, Goodyear didn't want to do that. The designer was very much focused on, okay, we want to do these things. We want the better rolling resistance. We want the better noise. We want to at least keep the comfort of the asymmetric, asymmetric five, but we do want to improve the handling as well. And they have done that. So thank you so much, Goodyear. I really enjoyed it. The difference between tires, like I say, in raw time, isn't significant, but that's because the five was already excellent. 
but in handling in this size it is uh it's definitely a more sporty feeling tire well done goodyear you've made a tire that's very good in the dry and wet let's go and conclude and just look at the actual data for rolling resistance and things like that so there we have it fortunately the new goodyear asymmetric 6 is a very good step on from the asymmetric 5 in grip and handling but what about rolling resistance? Well, this tire is 8% better, which is a huge step forward, especially when you combine that with the wet braking, because they're normally opposing design quality. So excellent job there. And to further highlight its EV readiness, it's two decibels quieter. And again, that's a significant step because decibels are logarithmic and three decibels is twice the sound pressure. So it is quite a noticeable difference in sound. Comfort levels between the two tires, I didn't really have time to do thorough comfort testing, but comfort testing seemed broadly similar, which again is a positive given that slightly sharper handling. As for the Goodyear Vector 4 season generation 3, don't forget in the snow and ice, it's not comparable. This tire will absolutely slay these. These will be stuck and you'll be driving absolutely fine on that. What this tire has done is highlight to me how these tires in the larger sizes on heavier cars like the Model 3 Performance do actually work, which is really impressive because in my head and with my experience in the smaller sizes, I'd always assumed, perhaps now incorrectly, that on the bigger, heavier cars, it was even more important to have a summer and winter tire. I'm not saying that isn't the optimum way of motoring, it really, really is. But these tires are always getting closer to a one tire fits all solution so fair play to that tire so there we go thanks again for watching apologies again for the slightly lower quality than usual footage and the fact it's all a little bit rushed the asymmetric six is a significant step forward great job goodyear you've built on what we liked in this tire and just added a little bit more thanks to goodyear for squeezing me in for a few days at the end of a long trip any questions please ask below and as always safe motoring